Okay. It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. As always, I'm Austin Peterson, joined by my co-host, Landon Mance, and we are excited to have on the show today, Sam and Shermeen Greenman with Where It Is, coming to us live from Los Angeles. Sam and Shermeen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Austin and Landon. Really excited to be here today. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And, uh, you know, we can see on the screen, for those of you who are watching it on video, we can see some of your uh, apparel in the background, mainly the masks, which is uh, a big, big item, as we all know today, for uh, this time being during COVID-19. So we're excited to hear about that and how you guys kind of got your start. But Before we do that, we always uh, like to have our guests tell us a little bit about themselves personally. So you guys are husband and wife, obviously, but, you know, tell us a little bit about your personal lives. Do you have any kids and kind of how did you guys end up together and and starting this apparel company? Well, we met on the job. Uh, I was doing uh, behind the scenes uh, visual displays, which mean what you were doing. Oh, I, I worked in luxury retail. So we we met working uh, at Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, he was doing Vanity Fair uh, and he had some big projects in the film industry that he was doing at the same time. And uh, we just connected and started dating. And, you know, a few years later, here we are with three kids. So they're all a year apart and they're in elementary school. Uh, and uh, we, I have already always um, been in Beverly Hills area. So I was based here, been here for 15 years um, and then moved up to Bel Air. And that's the little, our little city where we developed where it is. Yeah, that's awesome. So three kids all one year apart. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, exactly. And that's where we found that now that they're growing a little older and they're more self-aware, they were uh, looking for things to wear that were cool. And, you know, they didn't want to wear stuff that was just off the rack. So they would always come to dad and ask him if he, they could wear something custom because they know that dad had um, uh, his past life in a specialty wardrobe so he could take any material and work with it and uh, come up with you know really cool costumes or everyday wear for the kids at school and that's where we got a lot of um, moms and dads asking us hey where are you getting your kids clothes because we (laughs) want to have something like that and that's where Sam decided oh we should do something like that for other people yeah I think it was our kids growing interest in you know their clothing and their fashion and, and noticing hmm I wonder you know you're wearing that today why 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 now you know they sort of developed their styles and when um, we would look to, to the wardrobe or uh, you know something that we thought maybe they'd want to wear um, it was interesting to find out what their interests were and so I started paying attention to okay well you know what, what is it that you like to wear you know visually I, I'm always in tune with um, you know, the, the scene, what people uh, are looking at, what, like, what they like to do, because my background was in graphic design and the movie business, and especially wardrobe. And um, so I started thinking, you know, I should develop some designs that my kids would want, designs that maybe we haven't seen or haven't been able to find. So that led me to start thinking about just, you know, basic t-shirt designs and things like that. And then you should say, well, we should just 
launch a line, we should do a whole line. And um, as our kids were getting older, I, I realized, well, you know, they want more than t-shirts. They want hoodies and they, they're into hats and they're into shoes. And so that really got us thinking, okay, well, what is it that we can offer visually maybe is a little different or hasn't been done before. And so that became my, my challenge to create um, ideas or graphics, designs that maybe were slightly different or, or took you know, one aspect of a design that somebody might like and put it with something else that maybe hadn't been done before in combination. So kind of maybe down a path of uh, you know, starting an apparel line. Yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, we, we've, we've been doing this show for not a terribly long time, but this is episode, uh, I think, 25, somewhere around there. And, uh, you know, there is a recurring theme, actually, about half of the people that we've had on as guests didn't set out to start a business, didn't think that they were going to start a business. And then something like this happened, right? So you had your kids who were asking about different designs or dad, I want to look, you know, cooler or whatever, which, you know, I, I've got kids too. My, my son's 20 years old, my daughter's 17. And I, I remember very vividly back to when my son was about 13 or 14 years old and, and he you know, he's an athlete, has been his whole life. And he, he came to my wife and I, and he said, you know, I want to, I want to change my style. And my response was, you mean you want to get a style? Like he, he wore, he wore athletic shorts and t-shirts every day of his life. Right. So he had no style and it was about adding, you know, creating a style for him, which he's, he's kind of fallen into nicely, which is, uh, which has been fun to watch. So. I, uh, I understand how, you know, our kids or our surroundings can kind of lead us to start to make decisions or, and even, you know, starting a complete apparel brand. So that's a, that's a cool story and a, and a great start to the business. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, in LA, it's hard to, how do you make something cooler here? Because you can get everything so creative and cool. But then our kids are into gaming and then they're into anime so there's a lot of aspects that, you know, when you go out to the mass market, you just can't find um, apparel with those certain games that they're into or, or even, you know, YouTube series that they are following uh, because they're foreign. So um, that is when the challenge came to Sam is that, hey, I want a, I want a t-shirt with this anime character. And you know, it's not a regular anime character, it's something very, very Japanese. So we had to custom make those for, for our kids. And they really, you know, no, they don't care if others don't know about it. They are passionate about it themselves. So they just are wearing it really proudly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta jump in real quick, Austin. So yeah, I don't go forget, ahead. I don't wanna forget to ask this because I, I think it's gonna be a really cool answer. So Sam, what what costumes are you designing for the kids for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am off the hook this year. Um, I've been so overwhelmed with work that, that thank goodness their grandma is taking over <laughs> the costume making this year. I think one one is having an elaborate dress. Anime. Know, anime character. Yeah, it's 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 really complex. So Grandma's help, uh, stepped up this year to help take care of those Halloween costume duties. And they keep asking me, what am I going to be? I, I'm still brainstorming. I haven't decided. Yes, <laughs> All right. uh, yes both the girls uh, have uh, custom costumes uh, of anime characters from Dangorompa, some series. And uh, the boy wants to be an evil, evil clown, which he is every year. He <laughs> is really into horror movies. Um, he's only seven but he loves uh, horror movies and evil clowns and his whole room is full of, you know, all these characters from uh, scary movies. <laughs> so it's like a haunted room. So <laughs> he's going to be an evil clown. Um, and uh, so we're, we're excited. We always make them custom, custom costumes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it starts out simple and then it becomes more elaborate. I think that's Very just in my nature to, to just step it up and say, well, wait, we can do this and we can do this which is always fun, but at the same time, I end up creating a monster, <laughs> so to speak. It's like, how are we gonna get this done before Halloween now, you know, yeah. But that's, that's I think the creative um, path that I enjoy is this, the, those little sparks of, you know, ideas. Um, and then on the business side, it's like, well, okay, how can we rein those in and make them, uh, 
you know, real, get, make this happen, you know, in a business sense when, you know, my mind has so many ideas and just, you can't do them all. You know, there's not enough time. Yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So I have to ask, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I know the answer to this, but you say grandma's taking over the costumes. Is this grandma your mom or Shermin's mom? Uh, this is my mom, Sam's mom. Okay. Yeah, she's actually visiting for a short time. She's uh, actually from Alaska, enjoying some California weather now. So uh, it, it, it's kind of been a trend. Each Halloween, um, she manages almost every Halloween to come and visit. Uh, just because since the kids were babies, uh, she was always here, enjoyed the Halloween time and the trick-or-treating so much that, um, you know, yeah, she just wanted to pitch and, in. And all these handmade masks are her creation. Yeah. So it's a family business. So she helps us, uh, helps us with custom, a one of a kind masks that, um, you know, some of our um, uh, high net work clients request. Uh, now, especially for Halloween, there are some parties going on that should, shouldn't be going on in the <laughs> Hollywood Hills <laughs> and the Bel Air Hills. So we've gotten some orders for those, which are custom orders. So she helps um, hand make those for us because they, those ones are really elaborate um, that they want. So yeah. yes. <laughs> Request for wedding masks and mm -hmm. pretty blinged out styles. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and red carpet. Um, and we already have holiday masks, like we're doing some velvet uh, material, lace material. So yes, all kinds of fun masks that she produces by hand. Yeah. Well, we're starting to see where Sam got his start in, in the custom apparel and, you know, with his mom being a seamstress and doing these sorts of things, designing it, it's, it's starting to make sense how Sam got into this early on and how you guys are doing this together now. So that's awesome to, to have it be a family thing. And I don't blame your mom one bit for getting out of Alaska this time of year. So <laughs> <laughs> for sure. They yeah. had a little snowfall this morning. <laughs> Yeah, yes. well, I was I was salmon fishing there the last week of September, first week of October last year, so 2019. And, you know, the first day that I got there, it had been raining like crazy. We flew, you know, just a puddle jumper from um, where we were to the to the lodge where we were going to go, um, you know, fishing. And you couldn't fly above 1500 feet because the you couldn't see anything. First of all, we were flying instrument only until we got right to the lodge and then you could it finally cleared a little bit and you could see but the water level was four feet higher than it should have been and it um hailed that day so yeah it's it's an interesting uh, time of year to be in alaska for sure well you're gonna make sam very jealous because he <laughs> loves salmon fishing that is <laughs> if he could just retire and be on that river salmon fishing all day he would do that yeah i can never get enough of it <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, it was the first time for me. Um, and it definitely won't be the last. So <laughs> it, it was a great experience. We were fishing on the Sayu river, if you know where, where that is at all, but, uh, it's, you know, everybody kind of goes to the Kenai, but we were, we were out in the middle of nowhere, nobody around us except for bears, which we did see at least one bear every day. And, um, wow. you know, we had a great time. So. Yeah, his family is based uh, in Homer, Alaska. Okay. So that's where, you know, it's supposed to be the capital, halibut capital of the world. Um, but he still likes, like you, salmon fishing, the river fishing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. yeah, reeling in a halibut uh, can take hours and hours yes. and hours, right? You can, you can reel in a salmon in a few minutes, so. Yes. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, wow. Well. well, that's awesome. Well, Landon, I'm sure you want to jump in and, and ask some questions and, and maybe even uh, talk about Dana a little bit and, and her interview. That I think these guys would connect well with Dana. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as we were kind of just doing our, our, our normal, you know, pre-work kind of leading up to the interview with you guys, um, I was reading your, you know, your, your bio and, you know, poked around on your website. And I um, you know, Sam, you've got a really interesting background in the film industry and, and doing, you know, uh, custom, uh, you know, uh, wardrobe designs and stuff. So I, I think it'd be really interesting just to hear a little bit more about that. And then also, um, you know, from there, you guys can just lead into, you know, telling us about 
the business kind of as it stands today. It seems like masks are a pretty big part of what you guys are doing, but you've also got all these other cool things that are coming up in the future. So we'd love to just hear about all of that. Sure. Well, uh, when I was younger, uh, I was fascinated with behind the scenes. Uh, my earliest memories of going to Disneyland, places like that, and watching the animatronics of, you know, it was just, I was fascinated in how they did those kind of things. And I want to learn how to make those things. And um, I, I was fairly artistic, so I'd draw and paint and learn to sculpt. It's all through school. Um, I, I enjoyed those classes the most, uh, art classes, and later on learned to use tools and build and fabricate and decided I wanted to go into special effects. I didn't know anybody personally in the business, so I just kind of did what I could on my own in my garage, learning how to sculpt and paint. And I was specifically interested in special makeup effects or creature design, sort of the, the fantastic fantasy uh, things like that. Halloween, I was a big fan of Halloween, so I learned to make Halloween masks on my own and props. So I think uh, when I was about 25 years old, I worked my first movie, met some people who were also trying to get in the business of directors and filmmakers, and I was doing some special effects on my own and showed them my portfolio and said, this is what I know how to make. And so started from there, working on small films in Hollywood, Los Angeles, and landed a job at a special effects company where I was a prop maker and doing some special effects and um, a lot of specialty wardrobe, which is basically combining uh, sewing of fabrics with hard parts um, like armor, like a suit of armor or a spacesuit where you have a lot of plastic and metal, and, you know, pieces like that that have to be fabricated, cut, you know, maybe start out sculpting and then making a mold and casting in plastic or fiberglass, something like that and then combined with the fabric part. So my job was to make most of the, the hard plastic or metal pieces and uh, sometimes painting and installing electronics like lighting. So that became kind of a common theme of the jobs and the movies that I was working on were uh, especially wardrobes involving spacesuits, um, suits of armor, a lot of futuristic, you know, just a little bit of everything um, that was not normal for a piece of wardrobe that you could just go into a costume shop and rent. So um, in doing that, I, I never thought I would be really working wardrobe because my interest was somewhere else, but I learned a little bit about combining um, and fittings, combining uh, special effects and prop making with wardrobe and uh, attended a lot of fittings for actors and kind of just watched that whole process and was, slightly involved in doing some of the design on occasion for, for the, the costumes. And then, you know, moved back on to doing some of the things like um, set designs and um, uh, art direction. And I think it, it wasn't until after I started doing graphic design and trying to do a little more, more like home-based work. I've been in the business for a while and hours are pretty grueling. I thought, you know, I wanna find something as an alternative, as a backup. So I'm not always having to travel onto movie sets and around the country working on films. And so when I settled down uh, with Shermaine and had family, I was doing graphic design and realized that I, I still really wanted a creative outlet. I like to work with my hands, not just say on the computer doing you know graphic design, movie posters. A lot of my clients were needing um, promotional materials and, and posters and so I was doing a lot of that kind of graphic design and not so much on set. But I do miss uh, the hands-on work. So, you know, when our, our kids started talking about clothing and design, the design asked, caught my attention. So that's when Shermin suggested, well, what about doing clothing? I mean, you have a background in, in wardrobe. Um, and I was like, okay, uh, that sounds interesting, why not? And then, um, the timing was interesting at, at that point uh, as we were leading into COVID because I was with the business where it is, the name where it is uh, was an, a concept that I had come up years ago before I met Shermaine. And I thought someday in the future, I might do something with this because I was thinking it would be nice to have, as I was watching websites like Amazon, this marketplace grow, uh, what if we had a place for apparel 
that just sells wearables. And I don't know what that would be. So I wanted sort of a wide range option. So I thought the name where it is, that's the place you go to get what you want to wear. That's where it is. So then years later, fast forward, Shermin suggested, yeah, let's do some t-shirt designs because, you know, coming up with ideas for the kids, you know, I was fascinated by that. I go, well, you know, they're talking about dinosaurs one week or a cool shirt that had, you know, a dinosaur eating pizza. I was like, that's cool, but I've never seen a dinosaur riding a scooter. What about that? So I designed a dinosaur riding a scooter for my son. Okay, this is kind of neat. I haven't seen any of those. So I started paying attention to that. And then um, about the time we were really starting to get some designs going to like launch the, the apparel company, uh, COVID hit. And where you, you uh, Yeah, so COVID hit and um, my brother is a huge influence in my life. <laughs> he um, is the lead of COVID-19 and emergency response for WHO. Uh, and he handles 40 countries. Um, he's based in the regional office um, uh, of the uh, World Health Organization in Manila. And, uh, you know, he, um, he is taking care of all the hardest hit uh, countries like uh, China is under him, Japan and New Zealand, Australia. So um, he suggested, hey, you know, uh, my dashboard is going crazy when I look at the US. <laughs> and uh, why don't you guys, um, you already have an apparel uh, company or you're doing apparel. Why don't you just pivot towards face masks? And uh, why not washable cool face masks that uh, Americans would love to wear? Just not the surgical, you know, blue ones that you see now trashed all over the place. So, you know, we talked about it and we were like, okay, let's try it out. And then we also had some clients who were asking for it. Um, just like our neighbors, our clients would already known that, you know, we were selling the, our apparel to, they requested some custom face masks, uh, the washable ones. So we uh, pivoted and, uh, you know, like before you know it, we started getting um, call, it was all word of mouth. So people would see our mask on other people and they were like, where did you get this cool logo mask or this design mask? And then we started getting calls and pretty soon we had the city of Beverly Hills call us um, and we did masks for all of the government employees for city of um, Beverly Hills. And then, you know, we got an aviation company. I think, you know, Scott Bus. Um, so we started growing rapidly. And when it came to, uh, so June is when we got so many orders that we were backed up uh, in September. By September, we could not, we had to say no to a few orders because we are not, we, we were, we are a small company and we were just launching it thinking our production would be this small. And, uh, uh, and of course, our bread and butter is not coming from the from what you saw on the website. It's coming through the custom orders that you, there's a form and you fill that form out and you you tell us what you want. So that order form started just coming like full. Uh, and uh, right now, I think we're 15, <laughs> 15 clients backed up. And these are big clients. Like, you know, it's not like one or two masks. They're like hundreds. So um What's interesting all of a sudden is that the clients are willing to wait. Um, they are okay with the way that we're backed up, you know. I think that it's just because of the sudden surge in demand for masks and, and a lot of the, you know, the backlog people, you know, I see a frustration there. It's like they can't get what they need or what they want, but also they, they're kind of scrambling and go, well, go well, where else can we get this? What can we do? And, you know, when we, just before we were <laughs> switching over to masks and I was really trying to get things organized for the apparel, um, you know, I, I do a lot of research. I want to understand, you know, everything I can about the product. And, and the other thing we wanted to do was something that was luxury. because We both worked in that industry and something that was also um, eco-friendly, sustainable. Um, and then when it came to masks, you know, when we, realized that uh, a lot of the medical industries were having a hard time getting the things that they needed all the time, just in large quantities, because there was a rush on all these disposable masks. 
thought, well, okay, now that's really interesting what's going on here. And so I kind of looked to see, you know, well, okay, well, if that's a problem and, you know, some are being discouraged not to go out and hoard those, leave those for like the medical industry and people who really need those, well, then what's the option? Well, well reusable face masks. And I thought, well, okay, well, like, yeah, it's just like clothing. You know, you have socks, you change every day, you have shirts, you change every day, and you wash them and you reuse them. And that's, you know, like responsible. You're not just throwing your clothes away every day. Let's, what about that face mask? But it wasn't easy to go and get something. And even if you saw it, maybe it wasn't quite right. You know, everybody's different, just like clothing. There's different styles, fits, fabrics, you know, accessories. And we realized that this was really limited what was out there. And then the question of, well, what do I actually need? You know, what, what protects and what doesn't? So then it became this whole learning curve of, okay, let's learn about this mask thing. You know, what's behind it? What's behind the science? And then also, because we thought, you know, some people are not going to want to do this or they, they just aren't into this or they, they question it, but let's make it fun. Let's make this something that maybe, especially for children, well, they'll want to wear it. If they're supposed to wear it, they, they will enjoy it if it's not just this thing they're supposed to wear. It's like fashion. But that, let's, let's combine that. Let's take something that all of a sudden we're all supposed to you know, you know, be wearing or be responsible and thinking about and make it something fun and something personal, just like so many people with their clothing, you know, they're very picky about what they want. And so the challenge was, well, how do we find something like that? And I'm like, well, yeah, we just, we'll make, we'll make what people want. And what was interesting is that um, when um, organizations, uh, businesses, with many people, a lot of staff. Schools. Yes, schools were realizing, oh, we're gonna be required to provide masks. I thought, well, okay, what about um, something that they'd be proud to wear or something that has a little flair or spirit, you know, a little more enjoyable to kind of take the scare out of what's going on, you know, but um, we wanna provide something that's also quality so that you can reuse it, just like a good piece of clothing. It's just not something that's gonna fall apart the first time. So uh, a lot of research and testing and dozens and dozens of different fabrics and masks, making them from scratch, taking blank masks that are produced right here in LA, many styles and fabrics, organic, you know, cottons, polyester, span, all the, a lot of the, the, the same uh, materials that were being used for apparel we were familiar with, we're slowly coming out uh, in mask form. And so we're trying to offer a lot of options. And right now we're right in the middle of expanding product options. And at the same time, been bombarded with a very specific request for uh, a logo mask, almost like promotion. And so our, our theme was kind of, um, uh, you know, protect and promote. So um, that has been uh, consuming most of our time is uh, filling orders for logo masks. Uh, and we are trying to provide a style you know, that anybody might like, uh, all different shapes and sizes, um, you know, features, uh, designs. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at now, trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, meet the demand and keep it interesting and keep the quality good. You know, we're trying to do, uh, you know, a lot of USA made uh, products, uh, masks that are made in the USA, um, eco-friendly materials, uh, designs. You know, just... and, and a lot of customization. So like, you know, we have adjustable air uh, loops and then we were sending those out and we got an order from a nursing home in uh, New York. And we sent them some samples and then our, the feedback was, you know, a lot of our nursing um, patients in the nursing home uh, wear uh, hearing aid. So that doesn't go well with them. And so they want the one around the loop around the head. So, you know, we're like, no problem. We'll, if you like this material and you like that mask, we can switch it out and give you the kind that will work for your patients. So, um, you know, like uh, we had a few masks that we were making for the Lakers and they wanted, you know, we are doing uh, uh, the purple with the yellow air loop. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, customization in the sense that everything from the stitching to um, how it fits and the materials, um, the elastic 
and uh, you know the stuff where everything can be customized to your taste. Uh, and that's what um, you, know, you cannot find in the mask market is that you place an order and you're like, I want that one mask and I want it exactly like that. And that's what we do. So yeah. and, and the feedback's really been really helpful to yes. understand what it is. I guess, you know, it's just like clothing, what it is that people like and don't like. Um, and so I feel my job has been to take um, that feedback and uh, design masks that um, can suit everybody. You know, not everybody's different. Some people uh, sensitive skin, some people don't like anything touching their ear. Some people like something to fit very close to their face and snug so they don't feel it sliding around. Other people want a little bit of room. They feel too claustrophobic. So maybe they want a looser fitting mask. So these are all considerations um, now that we're trying to incorporate in products. And it's challenging and, and exciting to yeah. come up with these designs and because it's all so new. Um, we had a few women come to us. It's an organization that said that they have to wear their mask for extended uh, period of time because they work in the hospitality industry. So they have to wear it for almost eight hours uh, nonstop. Um, and they were breaking out. The, the girls are young. They were breaking out in pimples. Uh, and they said, you know, do you have any suggestion for that? And that's where Sam came up with that um, anti micro so, Yeah, so we're... Um testing some antimicrobial detergents that um, help <laughs> with not just, you know, keeping your skin healthy um, and free from, you know, irritation, but also it, it's, we're hearing a lot of feedback about how um, the, the masks, just like clothing, smells better <laughs> after washing. It, it doesn't like collect odor it. as fast, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's another uh, consideration that we've looked into. Um, those are just the things that we've learned that are important things that weren't maybe thought about in the beginning, um, but now are gonna be everyday things that people are gonna want, you know, just like we want people to wash this mask and if it can smell better than it normally would just sitting around the house, you know, with sweat yeah. on or something, then that would be great too. And so, you know, there's some detergents out there that are antimicrobial that really can go through the wash many, many, many times and still retain you know, that protection. So that's kind of exciting to be exploring. And then on the fun side, especially with Halloween, we've been doing a lot with glow in the dark designs. And I think that this is another thing to kind of get people interested, you know, and in thinking about, okay, yeah, I need to wear my mask, but what can I do today? Um, and then in terms of safety, you know, for um, as the, you know, the, the daylight hours are getting shorter, we're coming up with some designs that have uh, safety reflective strips and designs right on the front of the mask just to help at nighttime for safety. They're high visibility reflection designs for kids or anybody that's going to be out at night be wearing a mask. So there's a lot of interesting uh, design challenges like that too. Yeah, so I've, <clears throat> I've got several comments and several questions actually after that that uh, it kind of came up, but let's take a quick break to hear from our uh, our sponsor, and then we'll come back. And I've got uh, questions, and I can see Landon nodding his head that he's got questions too. So, <laughs> sure. Continuing after the commercial, if you'll stick with us. Of course, happy to. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. All right, tycoons, welcome back. We're here with Sam and Shermin Greenman with uh, Where It Is, apparel company out of Los Angeles, uh, Bel Air, really. And uh, we're talking about what they've been able to do over the past year in building this apparel company. And even though they had to pivot completely from where they were with COVID and, and uh, you know, switch to masks that they've been able to make it successful. And so, you know, I, I've got several questions that kind of came up from the last segment where you were talking about that. And I think honestly, every person in this world can say that they know more about masks than they ever thought they would. <laughs> right. Um, and, and so, it, 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 yeah, it's become part of our everyday uh, world nowadays, whether we want it to or not. Um, and, you know, Sam kind of hit on a couple of things. So first, let me kind of lay the groundwork here. So when this first started, 
my my wife is on the board of a nonprofit um, that tells the stories of refugees that come into our country, right? And it's called it's called their story is our story. And she has, she just, my wife has a huge heart. She just, she wants to help any way that she can. And so when, when this really kind of kicked off, my wife and daughter started making masks and they were, they were sewing them in our entertainment room at home. And at this point they've made over 2000 masks, which is, I mean, for their own sewing machine (laughs) is incredible. Um, And, and they've done some of the things that you, that you talked about they're not doing it for profit. They're donating the proceeds to this, to these refugee organizations around Phoenix and and doing what we can to kind of help out there. But um, they've, they've learned a few things along the way. Right. And so they they've learned about the, the nose clips that some people like, some people don't like the nose clips. The big thing that actually really sets my wife and daughter apart, and you guys may already be doing this, or maybe you want to, you know, think about it is, People enjoy wearing my wife and daughter's masks because they use ear loops that are made from Jersey cotton rather than elastic. It's more comfortable, right? My right. daughter's in the orchestra at, home, at school and her doctor says, my wife made me a mask, but I don't ever wear it because the one that Ella made for me, the ear loops are buttery soft, right? Oh. And so, you know, it, it's pretty cool to, to, you know, have seen and been involved in this. And I, I don't have one of them here today, but I've got one that's got some baseball logos on it. And so, you know, the customization, what Sam said is, is absolutely correct. People want, they don't want just a plain, you know, medical mask or even just a plain black mask per se, depending on, you know, what it is that you're wearing today. I'm wearing a plain black mask, but it just kind of goes with, with what I'm wearing. So I'm good with it. Um, But in, in the customization, you know, Sam said, a lot of people don't want to wear them. Right. And some people think that, you know, I mean, I think it's been politicized way beyond where it should be, but you know, they don't work or it's useless or I shouldn't have to wear them or whatever. And so when you mentioned it, it made me think, and I don't know how big a sport fans, sports fans you guys are, but several years ago at the Super Bowl, Marshawn Lynch was there being interviewed and, and they have to show up for media day. And so they would ask him questions and his response every time was, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Didn't matter what they asked him. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Was his response, right? And so you, know, you, you talk about customization. It made me think about the people who don't want to be wearing a mask, right? You could put all kinds of messages on that mask. You know, my daughter can't stand wearing one every day because we are in-person school. She can't stand wearing it all day at school, but she and all of her friends would love wearing a mask that said, I'm only wearing this so I can be in school or they're yes. forcing me to wear this so I can come to school or, you know, something like that I think would, would be awesome. I mean, you yes. guys I'm sure would sell tons of those. Yes. We have actually had some requests saying I survived COVID. That's why I'm wearing this. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so we do have those kinds. I, of I have a notebook. that's just full chock full of napkins, idea sketches, and, <laughs> and, you know, just ideas at midnight, I'll just, you know, like, plug into my phone, and then draw out, and yeah, the challenge is, is, you know, deciding, well, which one do we do first, and when am I going to have time to, to do that one, and, um, you know, because we'd like to, we, we have limited time to fill orders, and to put things out there that anybody can go and shop around with, and so I feel like it's, it's about, uh, my job now is to find those designs that most people would like. I mean, we can't please everybody, but there's just too many um, fun designs that I would like to see on a mask, but it's, it's tricky to get them all out there. And I just, I'm always bringing the ideas in and listening and asking people, well, what do you think, what would you like to have on there? And you know, I can just look around and see how people love, you know, to show their style through what they wear, you know, the clothing, uh, tattoos, jewelry. And I was like, you know, it's just, it can become that too. People really want, they're, they're okay if they can express themselves through their mask. And so I, I just, yeah, my head's always spinning with all these ideas. <laughs> It'd be great to see this and this, but then I have to, Shermaine's good at getting me to focus, <laughs> bring me in and go, okay, this is, let's, we're trying to make this a business. So we have, you know, a list of things to do <laughs> and move it forward. So um, yeah, there's some really, that. Like you said, that's a great idea. And um, I wish I could somehow see all these ideas, you know, 
finished on a mask and, and so then see how people think that. of them. Yeah. So yeah. we're working towards that. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, just uh, trying to listen to what people want and then, then get it out there and, um, yeah. Yeah, and learning, learning about this whole process because I mean, yeah, a year, year and a half ago, I never thought I would be making a face mask and designing like I never imagined. Yeah. You know? And here yep. we are. Yeah, yep. it's interesting. Okay. Well, the, fir the first idea is free. After that, it's a dollar <laughs> for mask. So, yeah. royalty, royalty checks coming your way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll and I'll and I'll just I'll give you this other bit of free advice as a guy who's been married for twenty two years. The, the response is always, "Yes, Shermin, whatever you say, Shermin." You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> that has served me well over the last twenty two years. <laughs> yeah, Sam's genius artistic mind just goes on a roll you know he's always coming up with these awesome ideas and it's incredible because i'm not a artistic person i'm not a creative person i'm a very business minded uh and driven person when it comes to branding um so we're very we're the opposite so we're learning how to work together as husband and wife and I've decided, like, instead of talking to him, I will just email him now because <laughs> we will talk about it forever. And, you know, he wants his ducks in a row and he's a perfectionist. And it drives me crazy sometimes how, what a perfectionist he is when it comes to his product. And for me, I'm like, come on, talk to him, let's get it out there. They're waiting. Um, yeah, we have orders to fill. And, you know, I'm the that guy who has to email this person and say, you have to wait another week. And he's like, well, what about that, this mask? And what if I combine this with this material? And, and I'm like, let's get back on track. So yeah, it's, it's challenging um, because, you know, he's my husband and he's the father of the kids. And so, and then now it's the business partner. Um, so yeah, we're keeping it very professional. Like I'm, I'm going to email him in the middle of the night when he's sleeping. So he sleeps in the morning <laughs> and we don't talk about it until he's done. <laughs> it's an interesting um, path. And, and I'm learning a lot about uh, how to work with Shermin, my wife, and as a business partner too. And I think one of the most important things for me is to recognize what her strengths are. And sometimes her criticisms um, are a good thing um, or keeping me, pushing me and reminding me to stay on a schedule, you know, and what our tasks are. Because, you know, my creative mind tends to want to explore um, design elements or something that could just take me off in this, you know, this other direction. But, you know, we have schedules and, and you know, bottom line to think about. And, and so I've recognized um, that working with somebody very different than myself, um, who has different focus, um, who's trying to run a business with me is a blessing because where, you know, my weaknesses are, she has strengths and vice versa. And so I think that's really helped me, you know, shrug off some frustration. I was just like, wow, I have all this work to do. It's so overwhelming. I, I want to enjoy this process. But at the same time, you know, we, we have to decide, well, what are we doing with this, this project? Oh, it is a, it is a business and we want to have fun with it. And another thing that I found is really important is, um, especially because of the lockdown situation, you know, the, the shelter in place is um, we're a pretty tight knit family, Shami and I and our three kids. And we do spend, a, we have always spent a lot of time together. So for us, fortunately, it wasn't a huge adjustment. It just it was the time in our life where we were and starting a home-based business that worked for us. Um, and we've been able to involve the entire family, even just beyond our immediate family, because we have relatives that are fairly creative too. And um, I like that it was a chance for me to show my kids uh, one way where you can run a business and it can be a family activity and you can do it together. And that moms and dads aren't just always moms and dads. Sometimes they can be a, a business partner or a boss so it's been an interesting learning process, you know, to kind of a slow one for them because, you know, they're busy with school and kid stuff. But I think we've been fortunate that we can sort of explore this process all together and the family's been able to help out in one form or another, even if it's just, you know, sitting down and learning how to sew or, um, you know, how to design something in Photoshop for 
the design we want to create. They, they, they did some sketches for us and said, this is what we want to create. And we're like, that's great. And we all sat down and cut fabrics, just like you were talking about with your family. We started making some masks together. And you know, they might not be as focused um, as, as I've been with it. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll lose interest for a while and then come back and pick something else up. Or once in a while, I'll show them something, an idea that I have, or say, can you try this on? We want to see how this fits. And, and what, what would you like to see on this? Or do you like this color? And so it's been a good process of um, learning how to run this business and make it work and then have the family involved. And I feel fortunate that we're all able to spend time together, that even though, you know, the hours um, can be long, uh, we don't miss each other because we're together. So that's been really great. Nice. So I, I have a quick comment and then I want to ask you guys a, a question about uh, what your guys' thoughts are on the future of, you know, wearing, you know, washable masks. So I'm more of a plain Jane kind of guy. So I would love a mask, a black mask with that skull that's on your t-shirt, something like that. <laughs> now, Austin's a lot more flamboyant. He would probably like that one, the one with the blue rhinestones on it. That one he would <laughs> definitely wear. But I don't know that flamboyant is the is the word that I would use. Maybe, Maybe fashion, how about fashion forward? Fashion okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But but in all seriousness, guys, um I you guys have a really unique perspective. So you got Sam, you know, with your background and Shermeen with your background in fashion and your you said your brother that's in the WHO. And your guys' involvement in a in a fashion leading community, you know what what are your guys' thoughts around the future of this whole mask thing? I mean, is this is this gonna just poof go away one day? Is this something you guys see sustaining for years to come? What what are your guys' thoughts on that? So. Um... I don't think the masks, unfortunately, <laughs> is going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, I feel like it's here to stay for at least the next three years, um, three to five years. Uh, even if we come out with a vaccine, uh, I don't think everybody is going to rush out to get the vaccine um, because, you know, as you know, it's been the vaccine itself has been <laughs> rushed, and uh, a lot of our informed clients uh, have already uh, confided in us that they don't want to be the guinea pigs, they don't want to be the first ones to get the vaccination. Um, and even if you want to get the vaccination, there will be distribution um, challenges when it comes out. So it will be retained for uh, you know, the elderly or for people in the military or people who really need it. So um, once the vaccine comes out, which is another six months away, which we've heard from different people who are in the know-how um, and the distribution will another, I, you know, by the time everybody can get it, it will probably be 2022 and beyond. So, uh, you know, do people want to go out and get this vaccination that that they don't know the side effects of yet because this has not been um, launched uh, and proven on the general population? Uh, or would they just rather keep their social distance and wear a mask? Uh, and we have actually asked this of our clients and uh, most of our clients have you know, told us you know, they would rather wear the mask and socially distance uh, and not get the vaccination, the first, the first one that's out, and they're willing to wear it for another two, three years. Um, so we're looking at the branding uh, of where it is as the mask will always be there. Even if you are vaccinated, the um, COVID is not going anywhere, it's not gonna proof vanish. Um, so when it comes to um, you know, the flu season, it, uh, it will arrive again and the elderly or the younger population during that period will definitely still wear masks because now people will get used to it and they will automatically go to it for protection. So yes, we are branding it 
as um, a staple in our brand. And uh, that is where um, we are seeing it. It's going to be the, the hottest accessory, the go-to accessory, like when you grab your, you know, your Birkin bag or you grab your wallet, it's going to be the first thing that you grab and then you grab your wallet because you can't go out without it. So, um, so that's why we have long-term plans for it. Yeah, but initially I was really surprised when I was looking at the numbers and some of the studies and they're saying, well, yeah, this isn't gonna go away. This is not gonna be an easy thing. I, I guess just, I was naive. I was like, well, really? Like, how long? I mean, I don't think it'll last that long. We'll figure this out. But um, yeah, it's, it's like every month I hear new reports and um, new studies that say, well, you know, it's a little trickier than we thought. It's not, we're not gonna be able to just knock this out right now. And, so um, I, I was surprised that, um, that it's, to hear that this probably is going to last as long as Sharmina is saying it is. And yeah, the more I, I listen and hear, and I keep hearing that, I was like, yeah, she might be right. This this could be around for a while. So we'll have um, a great resource, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> but, you know, that's been another thing too. Is you know, in the beginning when I first was hearing numbers, it was on the radio. You know, we'd listen to the radio every day and. I was hearing these numbers and I was like, Shamim, did you hear the numbers on the radio? This is kind of serious, I think, you know, let's, let's, let's not jump to conclusions, but you know, we were just kind of running some numbers on our own and going, okay, how does this compare to the flu? And then, and I remember actually in February, I uh, went in for a checkup from my doctor's office and um, I was aware and pretty cautious of what was going on in and I don't, I got the sense that a lot of people weren't aware of the seriousness of it. Masks um, were not. Overseas. I think here in the States, a lot yeah. of people, they, they didn't really, either they hadn't heard or they weren't concerned yet. And I remember um, having to go into some stores after just hearing on the news of how bad it was in other countries, thinking, well, you know, I, I should be taking some precautions and nobody here really seems to be doing that. But when I went into my doctor's office, I did bring a mask just because of some of the things I had heard. And I happened to have some disposable masks because what I do when I build and fabricate, I always had those around for painting and sanding projects. And so I walked in with some and, and I remember one of the, the staff saying, oh, you have one of the good ones. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Goes, we cannot get those. We're supposed to go get that kind, we can't. And I was like, wow, okay. So then when I was talking to my doctor, he kind of explained the situation and you know, whether, you know what, what the importance of the mask is. And a lot of it has to do with how you wear it and what kind. And, and so I asked him, well, tell me what you know about this you know, from a doctor's point of view. And, and so he, he said, well, we're, st we're still learning a lot. Um, and I just felt like, well, okay, you know, this will, you know, six months, maybe this will all be handled. And I was surprised. It's like, it's getting worse. And I've been hearing, you know, the reports of how it's traveling around the world. And there's, you know, you know some, um, I guess the surges and, and de delayed response and news reports and things like that. So yeah, it's this, for me, I, I've kind of opened my mind to like, I, okay, this could be here a while. And so the mask part of the business, I was not assuming that it was gonna maybe be long-term. I just thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll just do it because people need it. We, we're having a hard time finding what people want or what we even wanted. Initially, I was thinking, like, oh, is it that hard to get these masks? Like really doctor's offices can't find this? The things that they usually could get. And we went online to see, like, they're right. We can't find this, it's everything sold out. And we looked, okay, what about, okay, um, reusable, you know, washable fabric masks. And there just wasn't a lot out there. When we found it in, in some countries, it had been out there, just not in the quantities that was needed all of a sudden. Well, we got orders so, from France because France couldn't find wash good quality washable face mask. And I have a lot of friends who are uh, in Europe, uh, in Switzerland and in France. And, um, you know, I was hustling to send it overseas to them because they're like colleagues from my past brands that are asking for washable masks because uh, they were back ordered uh, two months in France. So, um, you know, and now they, in other countries, they have um, a really strict uh, staple, like you cannot just wear a cloth mask, you have to wear one with a carbon filter. Mm -hmm. So when I was shipping them overseas to some of my uh, friends, they were like, don't send us 
plain ones. We want ones that are fully protected uh, because that is actually the law here. So, you know, in every country, it's now that I'm finding out, it's it's very different the way they're handling it or their policies and procedures. And it's great to have my brother who's also a doctor, his wife is a doctor, and that he is the lead uh, of COVID-19 emergency response. And, you know, he has to contain it in 40 different countries. So he updates the dashboard every single day. And he is in the midst of it. Like he works 20 hours a day uh, on just this pandemic. So uh, I have asked his feedback and from his perspective and his colleagues perspective, it's not going anywhere. And masks are going to be here for, from their projection, it's from five to eight years out. So I'm being conservative saying that it's three years, but that's what their, um, you know, um, WHO is projecting is going to be there for five to eight years at least. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I personally, you know, I honestly, I don't know that it really matters if and when COVID-19 goes away, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> you know, my, my brother-in-law uh, has spent an awful lot of time in Korea, speaks Korean. He's a, he's a, white man living in Orange County, but um, speaks Korean, lived there for a few years when he was like 19 to 21 years old. And now he works for a Korean law firm in Orange County. And, you know, he, he talks an awful lot about, you know, his experience is Korea. And I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to see in our country that even before this happened, it was most commonly worn by Asians. Yes, right? yes, yes. And I worked in Japan and everybody was wearing it in the morning for pollution or if they're, you know, it's just courtesy. If you have a flu or you cough, you have to wear the mask. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it's, the, it's the courtesy that he hit on is that, you know, it, it's the courteous thing to do, right? So I, I suffer from seasonal allergies. And so I'll sneeze or I'll get a runny nose or, you know, different things like that. And, and I know that it's allergies, or at least I assume that I know it's allergies. But the courteous thing to do going forward would be for me to put a mask on if COVID's long gone and they've solved it and the vaccine is super efficient and nobody ever gets it again. Great. But we're always going to have some sort of infectious disease. We always have the cold. We always have those sorts of things. And so I think that you're right that it will be around forever. Will it be what you sell the most of in the future? Probably not. Right. I mean, I think you guys right. know that, but I think that it will stick around as an accessory and we've got enough people in the United States now who are realizing it's really not that big of a deal to throw a mask on if there's a chance that you're going to get somebody sick or if you're going to spend time with one of your loved ones that's in their 80s or 90s, it's just the smart thing to do. Yes. Right? And yes. so, you know, I, I think it's just become way too political about who should wear a mask or shouldn't wear a mask and this and that, but it's it's about courtesy and about keeping public health. I mean... <laughs> This yes. is sad. This, yeah, this is sad, but I was watching a, a game show the other day and one of the questions, and this was pre-COVID that it was recorded, but one of the questions was, if three men go into a public restroom, how many of them washed their hands before they came out? And the answer was one, right? <laughs> it's like, well, now we understand why there's a problem, yes. right? We, yes. We've not been great in our country about doing the things, the small and simple things that we need to do to avoid uh, infectious diseases being transmitted throughout our country. And I think that that's, this has brought to the forefront that we need to be better. Yes, definitely. I think like it, you're, you're totally right that if we had just done, you know, with washing our hands, putting a face mask on, and then keeping a little distance, I, it, it, it would have been a lot better, but um, it has been politi you know, politically uh, on the fence and I'm not sure why, it's, it's very scientific and it is uh, an infectious disease. Actually, my, my aunt is the head of uh, chair of Ebola uh, in South Africa and she's a very um, established microbiologist. So, um, you know, she, she, that's what she was driving into uh, the health ministry is that it is, you just have to take precaution. Um, and I, I just heard um, lately from the chief of staff saying that we are not, we're just going to figure out how to 
uh, we're not going to contain it anymore, but we're just going to figure out how to live with it. And I think that is scary because you can contain it if you have the right measures in place. So, and you know, if it's not coming from the state level, we should just be educated enough to do it on our own because it is our health and the health of our family and loved ones. So I, yeah, you're right. It should not be a political debate. It should just be a standardized um, uh, common sense that people should follow just like other countries are doing without it being a political issue. Yeah. Yeah, so we may not be wearing them every day going forward five years from now, but I think we will still be wearing them on an as needed basis or an, on an as courteous basis. So uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. This has been a great conversation. I've learned a lot. I've enjoyed it. I know Landon has as well. But I want to make sure before we cut you guys off that you give us a, an opportunity to know what the XYRRA line is. And maybe it's Zyra. I'm not sure I should have asked ahead of time. <laughs> Um, or Zira, but uh, tell us what that is and then end by telling us where to find you guys online. And, and uh, we really appreciate you being on the show. Sure. So it's pronounced Zytra. Ah. And um, it's uh, a name that we brainstormed, which is a combination of our daughter's names blended together. Um, so we we want to um, work on uh, providing, uh, I guess it would be clean, healthy apparel, uh, organic uh, quality, clean, um, sustainable, eco-friendly. I think that's the main theme of the, our Zytra line that we're developing right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a more higher end line so it's all going to be done handmade uh they are go uh we're going to launch uh things that are one out one of, one of five uh one of one and one of ten uh and then once that is sold out it's sold out um and sometimes we we already have zytra in the works and we will get um an email from our client like from our contact uh, uh on the website Hey, what, what new hoodie do you have from the Zytra line? And we will e we email them the image of the hoodie that we have right now. Well, if that client will buys it, which usually they do instantly, when it's bought, then when we get another request from another client about a hoodie, they will be shown a different image or a totally different hoodie. So um, these are limited production uh, and they are hand done, made in USA. Uh, made of organic or hemp material or sustainable materials. Um, and uh, yeah, the price price point uh, usually from t-shirt is from 150 and then the hoodies go into 350 um, to 550. Uh, and so, so that's our premium um, ultra luxury line that we have launched. Uh, and that is our secret on our secret menu. So you don't, you will not see it on our website yet. You, I'm not sure when we'll, you'll see it on the website, but it's like an underground cool secret um, collection that is already out there, um, you know, between Beverly Hills, Bel Air, New York. Uh, we have some in Geneva. So yeah, so um, you will see it here and there and then you'll know <laughs> if you see Zytron's any apparel, you'll know where they got it from. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. My mom told me my whole life I was one of a kind. So I probably would have gone with the Austin line, but with your three kids, I'll forgive you. <laughs> you are one of a kind. <laughs> she was right. Yes. Well, Moms thank are you. always right. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. So, so tell us where to find you guys online so that our uh, listeners know where to, to go and find all this, this apparel. Sure. So it's where it is. Dot com, w e a r i t i z dot com, and there's a phone number there, um, our, our contact information, so you can just email us, and we will get back to you right away with some cool stuff. <laughs> Very cool, Landon. Any last words? No, I just uh, thank you guys for your time today. Um, you guys have a really incredible story so thank you guys for sharing it with us and uh, we 
wish you guys the best of luck. Well, thank you so much for having us on your show and hope to come back um, maybe next year with some cool updates. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sounds both. good. We look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. We'll thank you. Thank you, Len. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Karen. Take care. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform. All right, we're clear. Hello. Awesome. You are still here. I thought I lost you. <laughs> no, 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 we're here. Well, oh, I'm pleased. He's like, oh, we have to take some pictures. I'm so, sure. I'm so glad. Thank you. Let sure. me... Um, let me do a couple, uh, on the, just as a, um, goodness, I can't talk today as a screen share, like a copy of screen share. So I'm going to back up, but if you'll all smile into your, um, your screens for a second, let's just do about three shots. Here we go. Very good. And then we're going to close out this major camera and I'm going to have Austin come up and switch sides with me so that we can uh, do a picture. Actually, shut yours off too, Austin. I always forget that. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to switch places and I will come around and we'll do a couple photos and we'll be right with you. Hold on a second. Awesome. I've lost them. That's great. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Thank you. All right, here we go. Just smiling again. Awesome looking at them. One more towards me. Here we go, big smiles. All right, we'll come back around and say goodbye. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. That was fun. That was awesome. <laughs> yes, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for them. coming on, guys. That was uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, and if yeah, anything you guys um, need or you want to shoot us an uh, email for math, we're happy to send you some samples. Yeah, complimentary. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let us know what colors you like, and so we'd love to do that for you guys. Radio X mask. Radio X mask. Oh yeah. Well, I and I need some. I I go through them so quickly, and uh, you're right about washing them. They don't they don't wash well. At least the ones that I have. Although I bought a couple in New York a couple of weeks ago, and they're better. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen. Thank you so much for the generous offer. We appreciate it. And again, just a treat. You guys were dynamic, and I. It, it's not often that we have folks that just. Well, it, it is. It is often, but. We had a couple episodes recently that that folks were kind of hard pressed to to just really land in that zone where they can speak so freely about their passion, even though they are just as passionate as the two of you. You both clearly were just spot on. It was fun. Uh, Angie, Angie at businessradiox.com. In a couple of days, we'll send you a link to the podcast, as well as a link to the Google folder that will include the video recording as well as the photos that I just took. And it is all Creative Commons content. It is Landon and Austin's gift to you. So please use the, uh, you know, what, whatever you want to on social media, we'll push it out uh, through Business Radio X and the guys will do the same, but we want you to make sure that you make this a rich marketing experience for yourself as well. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, Karen. Thank, Thank you. you. Our <laughs>